Hi, my name is Grace Cisna. I'm the CPA on staff with Projection Hub, and today I wanted to take a little time to walk you through our hardware and software as a service model template. This template is very similar to the rest of the Excel templates we sell at Projection Hub in that it begins with several input tabs colored in this light blue color here. And on the input tabs, you will find cells in this same light blue color where that direct you to where you need to enter data to build your own Excel model. After these light blue tabs, we have several green tabs, which are our output tabs showing you your pro forma financial statements, which are completely built by the model based on the inputs that you choose. In addition to the financial statement outputs, we also have what we call an investor dashboard, which I'll talk about a little bit at the end of this video. So to start, I want to dive into our input assumptions tab. Um, just another note, as we're looking at this tab, you'll see this need help button at the top of all of our input tabs. Um, and once you download this, this model, um, if you have questions, um, if you need help filling it out, or maybe it works for you, except for you need slight modifications, please contact us. I've developed all these templates myself, and it's often really easy for me to make modifications for you. So if you need another revenue line or something just isn't quite working, please contact us at support at projectionhub.com, and we can get this template modified to fit your business for you. So on the input assumptions tab, we collect some basic assumptions as well as most of your balance sheet assumptions. So this means your company name, projection start date. Um, we collect information about investments and when those happen, um, your accounts receivable as well as AR terms, or sorry, inventory terms. Um, we collect information about your fixed assets in order to calculate both the fixed assets and depreciation expense. And then we also collect information about any loans you have to put on the balance sheet, as well as calculate our interest expense for the income statement. The next tab is the Input Revenue and Cost of Goods Sold tab, and this is the big tab in pretty much all of our templates um, where most of the hard work happens. So at the very top of this tab, we're going to calculate website visitors, assuming you're doing most of your selling through a website. And once website visitors have been calculated, we dive into hardware sales. So this model works really well. Um, I think a lot about um, a home security system with a subscription that goes along with it or some other some other item that has a hardware component and a software component to support that hardware component um, for years afterwards. And so that's what we had in mind when we thought through this template. Um, and so we dive right into hardware sales and we determine the number of website visitors that are making a purchase of hardware. Um, we even talk about upgrading hardware after a certain number of years. And then we enable you to show your product mix for different types of hardware. So if you've got um, different package options, different hardware options, you can put those in here with your price as well as your cost for those hardware items and select the sort of product mix for each of five years. And that is going to show us your average order value, um, the average number of items sold per customer. Um, as well as your cost of goods sold percentage, which is that counterpart of your gross margin percentage. From there, we calculate out your revenue from new customers as well as revenue from existing customers. So that revenue from existing customers comes from customers upgrading their hardware. And then we also look at the cost of goods sold for that hardware. Once you've sold customers the hardware, they're gonna need the subscription component um, to support the hardware. So we calculate our revenue from that subscription below. Um, we look at the average length of a customer relationship, the different subscriptions levels that you might have. Um, you can again sort of do a product mix here. So determining which customers are subscribing at which levels during which year. And that will give us an average monthly spend per customer. In addition to the, the spend per customer, there might be some sort of support fee for every customer. We wanted to work in those direct costs. So if there's any direct costs associated with the subscription, um, you can put them in here and the model is going to calculate out for you um, those direct expenses. As you can see here, it calculates subscription revenue and subscription direct costs. We also wanted to include a line for any other um, recurring revenue that you might have. This is open to interpretation, whatever works for your business, just really simple, enter an amount and then grows over time. And there could be a, any sort of direct expense associated with that as well. So then the model calculates out all of your revenue and direct expenses and ships those off to the financial statements. And you don't have to do anything else with that. Once you fill out your revenue and cost of sales tab, we move on to other expenses. And these are all of your operating expenses, not including the cost of sales or salaries, both of which are calculated on different tabs. On this tab, you can enter up to 19 or 20 um, different expenses. There's two ways that you can calculate them. 
Um, either they can be calculated in a fixed way. So essentially you're entering the amount per month. Um, as for advertising here, you can see entering $20,000 per month. The other option is using a percentage of revenue. Um, so our credit card fees right now are being calculated as 2% of total revenue uh, because this box here, we've selected total revenue in the drop down, and then we're plugging in 2% in the decimal format, 0 0.02, um, which is important that it's in that decimal format. I could also do credit card fees as a percentage of hardware revenue or subscription revenue or other revenue. So if you've got some sort of revenue driven expense, um, it can either be driven by your total revenue or one of your categories of revenue. You can plug that in here and use the percentage. Um, one note, if you do jump over to your income statement um, after you've filled out all the input tabs and see that one of your expenses looks really high, come back to this tab and check and make sure that if you've used that percentage of revenue option for anything, so if it's got anything other than fixed in this column here, uh, make sure it's got a 0 0.0 something, you know, or 0.1, that format, as opposed to like 10 for 10%, because otherwise it's going to be multiplying it by 1,000% if you've got 10 in there. So that's um, a common error that we see in filling out the templates. You also have an effective income tax rate on this tab. Um, note that these are all monthly amounts, but we've broken out the first three months so you can get your startup expenses in there, and then we let you enter just the yearly amount for the remainder of the time to keep it really simple and easy to fill out. Next tab is the input salaries and owner draw. So this works um, for inputting any salaried employees that you have, and then owner draw is also dividends, uh, depending on how you want to phrase that. So it'll show you cash at the end of the month, and then you can enter your dividend amount or your owner draw if you choose to do that. Um, but the salaries portion here is pretty self-explanatory. Note that you can enter um, duplicate employees or triplicate employees just by changing this number here so you know how to enter each individual employee. Um, you can just plug in more than one. So those are all of the input tabs for this. So I'm going to jump over to our output tabs and show you a little bit what those look like. So our first tab is the at a glance tab. And this has a lot of charts and graphs and ratios, a lot of stuff that's really good to snip out and put into a pitch deck. Um, so we've made some pretty charts for you showing your expenses, profit and loss at a glance, um, break even chart here. The next three tabs are our financial statement summary. So it's showing the three pro forma financial statements that we provide, the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet. Um, and it's showing those at the end of each of five years. So I'll just show you what those look like. It's the balance sheet. And the next three are the income statement, cash flow statement, and balance sheet for five years, but now we're showing them in the monthly format. So you get every single month for five years. Note, these are in a format that's ready to give to a bank. Um, as you can see, some of my numbers are a little large here. Just double click to make those visible. Um, these are in a format ready to give to a bank or to an investor. Um, our balance sheets are always going to balance for you. Um, a lot of times if you try to build your own projections, you're going to struggle to get that balance sheet balanced. It's just very time consuming. Um, we've put in all the time for you. So all you have to do is fill out the information in those input tabs and this is going to be balanced for you. So you don't have to worry about um, all that sort of technical background calculations to get these produced. They're going to come out for you in a really nice um, easy to read, clean format. So in addition to those output tabs I mentioned, I would talk about the investor dashboard. So the investor dashboard is new to our version two templates, which most of them have been updated at this point. So what the investor dashboard enables you to do is it enables you to look at different scenarios by changing some of the major assumptions of the revenue model, the revenue and cost of sales model. And it allows you to look at an original income statement and a modified income statement. So the modified income statement is essentially scenario two. If you want to change some of the major assumptions of your revenue model, you can change them in this box up here in the blue areas. And that will show up on this modified income statement here without changing the rest of your model, which is really nice. If you've got a model that you like, you can keep it all. You don't have to change anything, um, but you can play with some of the major assumptions to see how that's going to affect your income statement. This is also great for investors if you put this in front of your investors so they can kind of see um, how sensitive the income statement is to some of these various assumptions. So that is a brief walkthrough of our hardware and software as a service model Excel template. Um, if you have any questions, please contact us at support at projectionhub.com. Um, hopefully we'll talk to you soon.